So I want us to talk about uh, uh, some of our recent work that you have been doing, and you've been working really, really hard um, around the maths memory KO. What's the rationale for the maths memory KO? A anyone can speak is to secure our knowledge for the actual key objective. Mm -hmm. So without knowing what the basic part of that mem that KO would be, we won't be able to secure it. I, ca I can see you've got some really good ones there. Yeah. Um, I know the names are properties of angles. I know the properties of angles on a straight line, triangles and quadrilaterals. So it sort of differentiates yeah. um, across. I know what an acute obtuse reflex right angle is and can correctly identify them on a shape. To I know Pythagoras theorem. Um, I know the formula to find the midpoint. So these are these are some common things we expect our kids to recall very quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we, yeah, I suppose you are deliberately capturing that in your curriculum yeah. so that they succeed in <coughs> being able to recall yeah. core facts quickly. Tell me, how do you monitor this? Because you've got your normal curriculum plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, captured in the long-term plan, yep. which appears in our DPR. <gasps> then you got your memory chaos. So we've got ten for each year group, for, okay. and which are differentiated across the pathways. Right. So how we monitor that is, um, first of all, it starts from our homework. So our homework is mostly based on our memory chaos. How do we then? test that is through our starter. How we en encapsulate all of that would be on our DPR. So let me explore a little bit about uh, what, uh, what, what your expectation is. What do the kids do at home? Mm -hmm. And what happens when they come back? How do you know they've done it? And how do you track the progress made? So for example, you've read that uh, uh, one of the cares, which is I know that angle properties on a straight line, they have to memorize that. However, this is not independent from the work that they will also be assigned as part of the homework, which is going to be questions which they can only attempt once they've actually memorized the memory KO. So hence, they are both interlinked. It is not independent away from the main, main objective of the, of the theme which, which they are okay. studying. So go on, Zara, then. So what do, what do they do when they go home? What do they practice? Like, tell me, give me a typical example of a homework that kids will do. Okay, so for example, we've another project we've been working on is setting up memory homework oh. where they're memorizing key facts for KOs that yeah. they've been taught. That could be a cumulative homework. Um, once they've memorized it, and we've, ass we've quality assured that they've got the right fact to memorize. Yeah. When they come to the start of next lesson, there'll probably be, for example, the homework might have been learn the quadratic formula. There might be some questions to do with the quadratic formula. They've come into class. The starter, is, it might say, what is the quadratic formula? It might have a question where they need to apply the quadratic formula. There are four main KOs that we were looking at. So KO1, KO2, KO4 and KO5. You've got the questions on the board. I understand some of you can't see at the back, so I've sort of paraphrased the questions on the whiteboard here. You will have three minutes to, uh, to do this. So when I say go, you will pick up your pens. You will have three minutes to do this exercise in silence. Off you go. An example of the homework is there. And then at the end of that lesson, the teacher might then pull up DPR as a plenary task. Up to 180 degrees. Fantastic job, one, two, one, two, one, two. You get to move off on your DPR, fantastic job. Using um, the, mem the class uh, student view and update judgments based on cold calling students and seeing who actually knows what they were meant to memorize. This could be done during the lesson, while they're marking books, or at the end once you've packed up, while you're waiting for the bell. So when, when they practice the memory aspect of the homework, do you expect to see anything in return? Do they give something? Do they submit anything to demonstrate that they've done the homework? So on a normal sort starter, they will have um, a last lesson last week, um, this year, last year sort of starter activity. Yeah. When they submit their homework, essentially they're not physically handing anything in. Yeah. What the teacher would do, they will plan potentially um, questions around those uh, memory chaos that they are, they've set for homework. What expression would you use to rationalize this denominator? for instance, through an MCQ. Now, should the students complete that MCQ, four out of four, three out of four, that will then tell the teacher 
if they've done their homework or not. So they're not physically handing in a worksheet, they're not submitting anything on DPR. What the teacher would know is, right, let's do this MCQ, who got four out of four, raise of hands through a clicker activity, heads down activity, the, the teacher will then know, right, out of 30 students, 25 done the homework, the teacher can then mark their homework, either outstanding, complete, so on, on DPR assignment board. That's, that's really, really good. Yeah. That actually cuts down a lot of workload yeah. um, issues around homework that teachers have to, have to mm -hmm. mark usually, isn't it? And yeah. we know on top of everything else that we do, this can be quite burdensome. My next question is for Aminho. What is the formula for calculating area of a sector? Why would you ask me that question for? Why don't you ask me the quadratic formula? I'm not cutting this off. Eh. Okay, so right, this is a this is this is a memory KO, all right, for the kids, right? Right, good. I'm, I'm assuming the starter time that is allocated it doesn't get compromised either, yeah. meaning we're not wasting to phase uh, phase two and a phase three because we've got a homework that replacing the starter. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's important as well, yeah. so it doesn't jeopardize the structure of our lesson. Yeah. Thank you very much. You know, I know you've been working very, very hard to improve standards in maths, and one of the ways we improve standards, we, we get the curriculum right. And the curriculum work um, in maths, as with any other subjects, is ongoing. Mm -hmm. and, and the impact of Forest Gate, the maths development had over the uh, sustained impact, um, at the progress rate is above one. Yeah year on year, mm -hmm. uh, up until 2019 when we had the last uh, GCSE. Yeah, sure. I'm sure if, if the GCSE uh, was to take place this year, uh, we'll sustain that, uh, that kind of result with, with this new initiative that sort of helps to contribute towards um, um, you know, the result that we have seen so far. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.